You had enough jurisdiction. You're not that important. Do you know who you got to be for me to do what you say? You ain't him like that. You can't tell me what to do because you ain't nobody. I don't let nobody ass niggas give me orders. But if you really him, if you really him like that, I do what you say. I do whatever you say. But you just ain't nobody. To me. You somebody to your mom or probably to your children. You probably got friends and stuff that really give a fuck about you. But I don't. Not like that. Not like that to a degree that I'll be doing what you say. So now. Mm-mm. Nope. One of my favorite hobbies. Reminding whole ass niggas that they ain't nobody. So that they can have enough inspiration to go really work on themselves and become somebody worth being. Because a lot of them don't be nobody worth being. And sometimes they just need a motherfucker to remind them. Hey. Hey. Stop that. Can we get married? Uh -uh -uh. Shalom. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> this video will be entitled Woman, You Will Obey or Be Deleted. Woman, You Will Obey or Be Deleted. Simple and plain as that. Now, I know you saw the video in the beginning, this thirst trap right here that you saw talking her shit. <clears throat> Being all extra proud, all right, talking about what. She ain't going to listen to you unless you him and all this and all of that. <laughs> the pride of these women is off the hook. But the Most High is going to remove that pride very soon. And you women, you will obey. You will do as we tell you to do, as the Israelite man commands you to do. Or we have no use for you. So the Heavenly Father is going to delete you. Let's go bring a few scriptures out. Now, first, the Heavenly Father is going to bring forth <clears throat> some terrible times that are going to come. We speak about them often. Right, Jacob's trouble and all of that. Let's start here in Second Ezra chapter eight and verse fifty. And the Most High was speaking to uh, to Ezra or Ezra, right? We we'll started for eight. Actually, it says, "In this also, thou art marvelous before the Most High, in that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous." <clears throat> verse fifty is the key. It says, for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. So the Most High is going to bring a lot of terrible calamities to this society, to the whole world. As it says, for many great miseries shall be done to them that dwell, Salakia, shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Why? Because they have walked in great pride. The Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is tired of the pride on this planet. Particularly among you, you Israelites out there, the people of the Lord, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the most high is tired of your pride. You've been proud for a long time, proud in wickedness. You exceed, you exceed the, the wickedness of our forefathers and of all on the planet right now, especially you damn women. This woman acting like because she got a set of knockers. And you can see, right, look look, look in the middle of her head. This ain't nothing but a, a goddamn wig, you know? Now, at the end of it all, she's attractive, but this is all the wrong type of woman. You know, this is all the, everything wrong with these women today you see on this lady. Them eyelashes, right? Pride, talking all extra proud. And I wonder what she would constitute as somebody who was him. A guy with a lot of money. You know, or some type of porn star guy, whatever. I don't know. You know, I'm trying to keep it clean. And you know, you know what I mean? You can just use your imagination. I mean, this type of woman, she think you can't tell her what to do unless you got a bunch of money. Well, this money is going gonna, gonna to be of, of little use in the time to come because the Most High is going to bring forth that, uh, that mark of the beast. Okay, he's going to allow these devils to bring forth that mark of the beast. Then what you going to do? So as the scriptures say for many Great misery shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. So that time is coming. Now, 
going with the title of the video the scriptures tell us that we understand that that we're going to be an authority the israelites are going to be an authority and our people are going to be willing you talking all that shit right now about you can't tell her what to do she ain't got to listen to you because you really ain't nobody to her well guess what in the time to come we're going to be somebody and you will obey or you're going to be deleted all right first let's go to let's go to psalms 110 it says the lord gives dominion to the king the king is your shy and he's going to give dominion also to his men psalms 110 says a psalm of david the lord said unto my lord sit thou at thy right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool and this is what the lord is going to do but he's going to do it through his son through the son of david as it were which really was king solomon but it's going to you know king solomon was yahweh shy okay as we often bring out if you can't receive it okay cool whatever verse two the lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power what does that mean our people will be willing when they see the most high raise us up in power you're going to be willing and you're going to obey what we tell you to do everybody under under uh the yoke of the israelites or under the yoke of your shall let's say you will do what he what what is commanded now before we go into the kingdom there's going to be a period of time where the men of the lord are going to man you know the, uh, the spiritual power is going to come and in the day of our power you're going to be willing but before that those who who are disobedient rebellious the most high really going to purge you out of the way anyway you ain't you ain't going to be here all right women like this right here if a brother was to you know wind up choosing this chick you're going to listen i can't really imagine a brother choosing this particular lady because you know you can see i mean it's debatable but they're probably not real they're probably not real if i had to guess Anyway, verse 3, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of a holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast to do of thy youth. Right? We're going to get the do of our youth. We're going to be like we were even stronger than that. Right? That we were in the old days. When we, you know, when we were uh, men of strength, <clears throat> men of honor. The Lord said he's going to raise up his judges as at the first. And our counsels is at the beginning. So, and it also, a, a scripture in another place, it says we're going to be uh he did his feeble among you let's get it real quick here feeble you know and i and i was kind of stuck for a little while sitting here trying to uh trying to put together this lesson as i told one of the other brothers i was stuck because there was many different ways that i could have brought this lesson out but i didn't want to just make it a lesson you know just getting on women you know calling every type of name doing all that nah we might as well just bring some edification out because what the lord is going to do he's going to put you women in a precarious situation and and really you're going to be saved by bringing forth children that's going to be the reason why you get saved or not so a woman like this if your womb is all messed up and you can't bring forth no kids we don't need you you can stay here and just burn up in the missiles you know at the end of the day and then really a woman's gonna have to be chosen by the lord anyway all right you got to be of the elect and I can't imagine, but you, hey, but it's going to be all types. Let's see here if I can get this scripture. Shall be. Lock here. So this is, uh, this is Zechariah 12 and 8. It says, in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as the most high as the angel of the lord before them that's when we finally in the kingdom but prior to that the lord is going to raise up men with power all right he's going and he's already starting to do it he's giving us that ability to judge what is this isaiah 1 let me read the scripture that i quoted <clears throat> this is isaiah chapter 1 and verse let's go right to the point um verse 24 it says, therefore, said the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Who are some of the Lord's adversaries? He's talking about his own people, the two thirds, the wicked Israelites, the rebellious Israelites, the harlots, the thieves, right? The, uh, uh, the witches, the warlocks, the gangbangers, the murderers. The Lord is going to get rid of you. You are his enemies. He goes on. And that's just a, a small list. There's way more enemies. 
He says, And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. You see that? So those who convert, repent ye and be converted, the Lord is going to redeem you. What, what about the ones that don't? And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. So guess what? You can also forsake the Lord by going against his natural order, how he laid things out. And in his, and in his natural order, he put the man above the woman. And you will listen. You will obey woman or you will be deleted. Okay? That's just the bottom line. And all that proud talking, them damn boobies ain't going to get you out of nothing because we're not going to choose women based upon so much upon your outward beauty. It's going to be about, you know, your inward beauty. This is First Timothy <clears throat> chapter 2 verse 14 just a quick script it says and adam was not deceived you know what let's just jump up verse 13 for adam was first formed then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being in the transgression uh salaki but the woman being deceived was in the transgression you're the one that went off the serpent tricked you because you're the weaker vessel now here you are all these many thousands of years later eve talking about you ain't gonna listen to us Oh, you will obey or you will be deleted, woman. Verse 15 says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if there's a condition, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. And if you look at another version, it's not far off. It says the same, damn, damn near the same thing. The NLT says, but women will be saved through childbearing. What is childbearing? Your ability to bear child or well, childbearing is actually bearing a child, but it's speaking of your ability or your willingness to bear children. The fact that you can bear children is the reason why you're going to be saved. But women will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue in to live in faith, love, holiness and modesty. Modesty is a big one. Let's look up modesty real quick here. <clears throat> a modest woman. But not have a damn boobies all out up in the camera talking shit. Modesty. The quality or state of being unassuming in the estimation of one's abilities. You see that? Synonym self-effacement, -efface humility, unpretentiousness, shyness, bashfulness. See that? Self-consciousness. So you're going to watch what you say. Watch how you move. You ain't going to be sitting there talking about ho-ass niggas. You ain't nothing. You might be something to your mama, but you ain't nothing to me. The Israelite man is going to be everything. All right. We already are everything. You just don't know it yet because your ass too dizzy. You caught up in the world. You women out there. We talk about the wicked women. NIV, it says, but women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love and holiness with propriety. ESV, yet she will be saved through childbearing. If they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. One more CSB. But she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love and holiness with good sense. I got one more here. NASB 20. But women will be preserved. You're going to be saved through childbirth if they continue in faith, love <clears throat> and sanctity with moderation. You see that? So. Everything is contingent upon you bearing children. That's the main reason why you, you're going to be saved. Those, those women that are saved, you're going to be saved for Israelite men to bring back, to bring children into the kingdom. That's the reason why. Not because you all that, not because, you know, your boobies sit up like, you know, <laughs> two baby puppies or whatever. And don't, and don't get me wrong, you know, I ain't, I ain't all into it like that. I'm just saying. This right here, woman, this will is, lead you to trouble. This is the problem with, with Jake now. Simping after these, these fucking sidewinding snakes. Simping after these, these crabs in a bucket. A thirst trap. And, and she doing that because she knows she can do it in this society. But soon, her daddy Esau going to get bitch slapped by your Howard Shire. Then what? So here, we see what's coming. Now, what's going on now is what you can read it here. Judah's women denounced. 
Isaiah 316 says, Moreover, the Lord saith, the Lord said this, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks. Now, what does haughty mean? Haughty is another word for fucking pride, man. Let's look it up. Define haughty. Haughty. It says arrogantly superior and disdainful. Is not this woman right here has an air of ar being arrogantly superior to everybody, to men. Men are beneath her. She's better than you. She don't have to listen to nothing that you say, right? Wiggling and shimmying with her boobies all up in your face. L listen to this shit. Let's play a little bit of it. Salakia. Forgot I had the sound off. Let's take it back a bit. You had enough jurisdiction. You're not that important. Do you know who you got to be for me to do what you say? You ain't him like that. You can't tell me what to do because you ain't nobody. I don't let nobody ass niggas give me orders. But if you really him, if you really him like that, I'll do what you say. And we are him like that. And you're going to do what we say. You're going to obey woman or you're going to be deleted. I'll do whatever you say. But you just ain't nobody. To me. You somebody to your mama, probably to your children. You probably got friends and stuff that really give a fuck about you. But I don't. Not like that. And that show you right there, these women, as, as the apostles and elders been telling us, brothers, for gener for years, I'm about to say generations, for years, these women don't give a fuck about you. But the time is going to change up. And the Lord told you about these damn demons. He says, moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. The Lord, therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. What about this chick? Look at this. You see that part in the middle? That damn coconut parted down the middle? That ain't nothing but a damn wig, okay? That costs money. That ain't growing out of her scalp. That costs money. So what did the Lord do for her pride? He smited her with a, with a, with a scab on her damn, the crown of her head. And by the way, this video was sent to me. <laughs> By the head brother from the Charlotte camp. All right, Aisha Yar. All right, also the head of the uh, region, the Carolinas region. This brother sent me this video, and I guess he came across it and it kind of pissed him off. And he sent it to me, and I watched it. It pissed me off a little bit, too. I mean, if you can get past how she looked, you can see right through all that. This, this damn lady is a demon, man. So it says again, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab. The crown of the daughters of Zion, you, you so-called black women mainly, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. See, and the most High goes into, you know, in here, all the different things they wear and how they behave. Right. Let's go real quick to the good news translation. Let's get Isaiah. Is that what is that? Chapter three. Yeah, let's read that. <clears throat> Just bear with me here briefly. So this is Isaiah chapter 3. And what verse were we in? Uh, we started around about 16. So like you. Yeah. Isaiah 3 verse 16 from the Good News Translation. It says, the Lord said, look how proud the women of Jerusalem are. They walk along with their noses in the air. They are always flirting. They take dainty little steps and the braces on their ankles jingle. But I will punish them. I will shave their heads and leave them bald. Woo! A day is coming when the Lord will take away from the women of Jerusalem everything they are so proud of. The ornaments they wear on their ankles, on their heads, and on their necks, and on their wrists. He will take away their veils and their hats, the magic charms they wear on their arms and at their waist, the rings they wear on their fingers and in their noses, and all their fine robes, gowns, cloaks, and purses, their revealing garments, their linen handkerchiefs, and the scarves and long veils they wear on their heads. See, the Lord is going to do this. Instead of using perfumes, they will stink. 
Instead of fine belts, they will wear coarse ropes. Instead of having beautiful hair, they will be bald. Instead of fine clothes, they will be dressed in rags. Their beauty will be turned to shame. See that? So the Lord is saying he's going to do this. And he did it. He brought us down low. Now we get to the time where he's going to bring us back up. But before he does bring us all the way back up, you women, you are going to be a sight. Isaiah 325, he says, Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. And this is when we're going to say to you, do this or do that, and you're going to try to talk shit, and we're going to let your ass get deleted. We're going to let you get all messed up. Here in the Good News Translation, it says, The men of the city, yes, even the strongest men, will be killed in war. All them two-third niggas and whoever she she respects and says is him. They, they, hey, these men of the world, <clears throat> these celebrities and these men of, of the world, they ain't going to be shit. They ain't going to have nothing. The Lord going to punk all them niggas. He going to take away all that money. And them niggas going to get the mark of the beast, right? And then you're going to be looking for somewhere to turn. We're going to see what you're going to say then. You're going to be getting turned down left and right, Eve. All these type of women, you're going to be getting turned down. The women of the Lord is the ones that that we're gonna take we're gonna take these <laughs> these machines these thirst traps we don't we don't need you okay we don't need you thirst trap we want virtuous women we want the daughters of zion we don't want these uh these black women for lack of a better word these american four threes three oh fours whatever they call them so it says here the men of this city Yes, even the strongest men will be killed in war. The city gates will mourn and cry, and the city itself will be like a woman sitting on the ground, stripped and naked. Right? And then when he talks about the city gates, the gates are the leadership. Right? All you well-to-do niggas that's supposed to be the leaders, them, them black preachers and all that, you ain't shit, man. The most high about to bring you down. All of Jake about to get judged. Now, after that, <clears throat> it says a remnant prepared. In verse 4 it says, And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. This is before we go into the kingdom, by the way. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So as you can see, going from chapter 3 to chapter 4, right? Israel going to be, you know, the women going to be lamenting the whole nation, right? They're going to be going through Jacob's trouble. Then we transition to the kingdom. It says in verse 2, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is ridden among the living in Jerusalem. What is that? When you're ridden among the living, that means you're in the Lamb's book of life. You're of the elect. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. But what did the Lord say? You're going to be saved in childbearing. So if before we go into the kingdom, if you rebellious, if you run in your mouth, if you won't obey, if you're unwilling to do as, as commanded, not asked, commanded, you will be deleted, woman. Okay. You will be deleted. And we don't give a shit if you get mad. You feminist bitches. When you watch this video, you can talk your shit. You're going to be on that list to be deleted. But it's the, it's the Lord's list. You ain't going to make it. Okay? Now, I want to go real quick and read this in the Good News Translation, Isaiah 4 and 1. When the time comes, seven women will grab hold of one man and say, We can feed and clothe ourselves, but please let us say you are our husband so that we won't have to endure the shame of being unmarried. And that's just parabolic talk, okay? Women are going to grab hold to a man of the Lord, and, the, and we're going to have many women. Of course, you ain't going to be able to feed yourself and clothe yourself. That's just the way that it's written. It says, the time is coming when the Lord will make every plant and tree in the land grow large and beautiful. All the people of Israel who survive will take delight and, and pride in the crops that the land produces. Everyone who is left in Jerusalem, whom the Most High has chosen for survival, will be called holy by his power the lord will judge and purify the nation and wash away the guilt of jerusalem and the blood that has been shed there see 
So that's what you see. The Most High is going to do a mighty work. He's going to take these pe these men who you regard as nothing. They're going to be raised up in power, and you're going to obey, or you're going to be deleted. And this and you ain't going to make it to the kingdom. So you may look at what well, I say in the kingdom, brother. No, but you going off? No, we ain't going off. You fucking going off. Leading up to going into the kingdom, what's going to be the uh, the standard? You are going to obey the men of the Lord. You're going to do what the, what the man. That the Most High has set up, who He has chosen, you will obey, or you ain't gonna make it because we're not gonna have any use for you. What what use do we have to take a barracuda into the kingdom of heaven? There's no use, and she ain't gonna make it. All right, so let's just uh we'll go. Let's read a few more scriptures here. This is Isaiah 13 and verse 11. Let's start up here at verse 9. It says, "Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger." To lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the most high says he's gonna destroy the sinners. The Israelites that are rebellious, they're sinners, he is going to destroy them. Let's jump to verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Everybody that's proud, the Lord's going to cause that pride to cease. He just said it. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the hardness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So guess what? Men are going to be very valuable. Not just any man, but a man of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And any woman that don't like it, you're going to run your mouth. You're going to try to say, oh, this or that. You're going to get deleted because there's going to be terrible judgment going on. And we're going to be the protection from that terrible judgment, you know, that the Lord got going on on the earth. And I ain't talking about the nuclear destruction. I'm talking about before the missiles come. The Lord says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as a chase row. And as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall turn, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. So guess what? In that time, Esau ain't going to have no use for you damn dames, right? These proud ass faggoty niggas in Hollywood, they ain't going to be wanting to do nothing for you. They're not going to be able to. The men of the Lord going to have the provisions. We're going to be given the power. See, right now we're on the bottom, but the Lord is going to raise us up in the time to come. And these types of these types of harlots, these little thirst traps, I keep calling them, because if you thirsty, she'll trap your ass. These thirst traps, they're gonna be the least of our. I Me, mean, ain't nobody looking for her. You ain't going to the kingdom of heaven with no, you know, with no silicone. Fuck all that. We don't even need you. You had your run. It says so. As the scripture telling you that everybody gonna turn to their own people. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined into them shall fall by the sword. You see that? So if you join into the Edomites or the other nations, they're going to turn on you. It says their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. You know what that means. Women are going to be getting ravished. You see, particularly, you know, it's talking about the oppressors women. But hey, you can you can put the, uh, the nigga woman in that, too. Because what's going to happen when these troops and when Jacob's trouble comes, it's going to be survival of the fittest. There ain't going to be no more talking about I don't want to or you you a nobody type nigga. Shit. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see in that day. The Lord going to do something terrible, man. This 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 uh Jacob's trouble is going to be off the hook. It's going to be on a whole nother level. Let's get Micah 7 now. <clears throat> this is Micah 7 and verse 9. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. And right now we're bearing the indignation of the Lord. It's a big embarrassment to have your woman out of control, your women of your nation to be out of control, running around the earth, panting after, you know, different various men like animals and horses. You see, that's very embarrassing to be the nation of uh, the, the strongest nation on the earth. But to have your women running roughshod in the earth like 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 hungry animals panting after men for money. That's why she's saying that. She's saying if you him, she don't mean if you 
you know, if you're a man of the Lord, she's going to do what you say. That ain't what she mean. She mean if you're regarded by society as somebody, she willing to do whatever you want her to do. She, you know, I ain't going to get graphic with it. <laughs> I was going to say a lot of outlandish shit, but I, why, why, why bother? Verse 9, again, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, which we're doing. We're under the curses because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Right. The most I gonna bring us forth to the light in which we are already in the light. We got the truth. And then it says, then she that is mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is the Lord thy power? You a nobody ass nigga. You ain't nobody. I don't have to do what you say do. You think I'm going to do what you tell me to do unless you him. If you him, I do what you say. See, this is what she's saying in so many words. You ain't shit. You beneath me. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her. Which said unto me, where is the Lord thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. And this is what's going to happen. You proud ass women going to get tried down in the streets. So going forward, <clears throat> as we see right here in Isaiah 32, right at the top, it says the glorious future. So this is what we're going to look forward to. Verse one says, behold, the king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. Who's the king? The king is Jehovah Shai. He's going to rule in righteousness. Who are these princes? These princes are the Israelite men. The elect 144,000 and then the rest of the, the one third, those men, they're going to rule in judgment. All right. And it says, and a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock and a weary land. And the eyes of them that shall see, Salakia, and the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. So all of our infirmities going to be healed. We're going to be straight in the kingdom of heaven. And also that damn devil going to be out of power. Okay. So just to show you here in uh, Revelation 2. Is it? Let's see. Yeah. Revelation 2. The men that overcome 144,000 particularly are going to be the rulers, the governing rulers, but also the rest of the one third. They're going to also have, you know, they're going to be ruling right alongside your Shai in the 144,000. OK, <clears throat> just on a on a slightly different level. Revelation 226 says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end to him will I give power over the nations. See that we're going to rule over nations. We're going to be in authority over everything. So this is a you know, this little puny American bimbo, we ain't really worried about you like that. Well, you ain't on our mind, all right? You can look at her, but all that, hey, I'm sure if you take off all of this and get down to the, to the you know, to the individual, she probably is a terrible person, man. And he that overcometh and keeping my works until the end, keeping my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. See? So Lord Yahweh Shai is going to give us a portion of rulership right along with him. Let's get one more here. Revelation 3. Is it 21? Yeah, it says, Revelation 3, 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. The throne is rulership. Even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. Okay. And that throne, there's great authority. We're going to rule the whole earth right along with our Lord, Yahweh Shah. When he comes to rule the whole world. All that shit about you ain't going to have to do what we say this, that. Yeah, okay. Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seven angels sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. And of his anointed, and he shall reign forever and ever. So when his rulership and his authority comes over the whole earth, he's gonna give portions of that rulership to his chosen men. And all the women gonna obey. All Israelite women will obey their husbands. Daniel 2:44, the divine kingdom. 
And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Well, I was going to say forever and ever, but it's going to stand forever. So guess what? You lose. And even before we go into the kingdom, woman, you will obey or you're going to be deleted. We ain't going to we're not going to cover you. We're not going to protect you. You're going to be deleted by the wild beasts, by Jacob's trouble, by troops, by men who want to work you over and all of that. Because in that day, all of this, all this, all this is going to be a curse in that day. And you're going to look a sight anyway, because that wig ain't going to be up to par. Them eyebrows, they ain't going to be, you know, done up that broad forehead. <laughs> Them eyelashes, they ain't going to be on you like that. You ain't going to be smelling good. You're going to be looking at a sight. And you're going to be wishing you had a man of the Lord. That's it, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to go into that lesson. You know, these women, they really get on your nerves, but hey, you have to keep it in perspective. In just a little while, we're going to be on top. All right. I'm going to say all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.